Hi guys, it's uh, Rob Marenghi here. Hope you're doing very well. So I don't know if you guys know this, but quite recently the Pentagon released three uh, videos, footage, uh, radar and video footage of unidentified flying objects. Officially released it, press statement, the lot. Actually quite late to do it, like the UK did release their UFO files before, and um, Australia before, and other countries before. So I'm going to do a very wise thing and make a totally unplanned, spontaneous video about UFOs. So, given that the Pentagon has released three videos saying, look, these are UFOs and we don't know where they came from. And we don't know who they are or how they're making it or what they want. Maybe all of which are untrue, I think, actually. Um, so... This video is very much based on that, the Pentagon, okay? The Pentagon. People accused of being all secrecy and, and lies and, and covert operations and special access operations and um, top security operations, all that is true. But even they have publicly released, because it's just so, it's just such common knowledge now and so many prominent people coming forward. Um, that I've, yeah, I feel confident in talking about. It's not a debate anymore, you know, it's, you either know the facts or you don't on this. Obviously, 90%, 95% of things people think they see at UFOs are probably not. They're probably drones, uh, people playing pranks with drones. You quite easily get multicolored orb-shaped patterns in the sky. They're swamp gas, uh, weather balloons, uh, satellites, um, you name it, you know. Um, I would highly recommend watching the film Sirius, S-I-R-I-U-S, because that has footage of a creature that looks a bit like a fetus. It's about seven inches in height, but it doesn't look human, although it sort of does. And in this film, uh, Sirius, S-I-R-I-U-S, which can be bought or rented um, from SiriusDisclosure.com, which is all about the UFO Disclosure Project and... Um, the evidence of 4,000 crash sites and hundreds and hundreds of other people coming forward, um, etc. Anyway, so they had this creature that was found in the desert. It was either in Mexico or Chile. I can't remember which, because there's been incidents in both places. But they took it to Stanford, um, one of the most esteemed, prestigious seats of learning in the, in, in the world. And they took it to, I believe he was the head of or... He ran the stem cell biology genome uh, department. Um, re sequencing genomes, running genomes, finding out what things are, a aging things, dating things, things like that. Very open-minded guy, obviously. Um, they brought in the world specialist on dwarfism, who, was <laughs> who, who basically said WTF, as did the uh, world's leading expert on childhood skeletal deformities. So... They did. Th this is all on the video. You can rent it for four ninety nine, dot four dollars ninety nine. I wish it was free, but I, I can see people are obviously going to pay to see it. Um, they interspliced the film with progress of this uh, analysis of this of this creature, and the man at Stanford concludes. You can tell he's very open minded, very excited about the whole thing from the start. But he concludes that it's humanoid. But completely singular in that it has ten ribs, whereas whereas creatures like ourselves have twelve, very rarely eleven, not ten. Um, a massive head, like the forehead, is three times the size of ours. Uh, it does have lungs, does have a heart. Um, they, through carbon dating in the bone marrow, they determined it was six to eight years old when it died. Again, this is seven inches tall, so just a bit longer than a small ruler, looks like a sort of Voldemort um, when he's in his true form, like a, uh, like a fetus, just imagine a fetus with a sort of cliched alien head, a bit burned out and dried up, and um, that's what you get, and they're, they're still running the genome apparently, I don't know if they finished that, but he said the genome, the way the computer does it, was he said there was, there was a phenomenal amount of things that couldn't match, or abnormalities, or piling up in the millions I think it was. As they were speaking, so they said this, the genome has still been sequenced, but they've never seen anything like it before. It's certainly a new species, could be um, from a different planet. Um, yeah, so another very compelling um, 
So I know this is such a paradigm shifter for most people. It's, it's too weird to believe. And I was the same. You, you just think, oh, no. And, and this, you know, the CIA and the powers that be beyond the CIA have um, done a very good job of ridiculing anything to do with this. Like the sighting in, I should have double checked the name of the, the place in, in America where 10,000 people, roughly, the mayor, police, everyone saw this. Bill Hicks might have done a sketch about this one, actually. Anyway. Definitely in America. I can't remember the district or town, but 10,000 people roughly saw this massive, massive, massive triangular shaped craft fly very slowly over their um, neighborhood. Again, police, everyone. And then, the, but the mayor, when he came out to talk about it, looked very uncomfortable and was uh, brought out a man in an alien costume to sort of. <laughs> To make the whole thing into a joke and a bit of a bit parody, but you could tell, or I could I think I thought I could tell on his face that he was not comfortable with it, and that he was obviously been pressured into into doing that to, to ridicule the whole thing. And the, if you think of UFOs, you instantly think of ridiculous things, and, and that's very much deliberately the case. And then there's tape of him about eight or nine years later, uh, very soberly saying that he did see them, and he was basically forced to. Uh, to shut up and there are all kinds of cases probably hundreds and thousands of serious disclosure um serious as the film it, it's it's direct it's, it's not very well narrated it sounds like job from arrested development if you've seen that and then dr lazar i think dr lazar dr Doctor, i think it's bob lazar and a scientist involved in this area dr greer stephen greer g-r-e-e-r -E he's 68 when you look at him he looks like a sort of mid-20s uh, bodybuilder type was a trauma doctor for years head of tra um, trauma emergency and then sort of got stumbled into this and, and gave up medicine um, to to study uh, UFOs full time he, he, this guy is brief there's interviews with him on, on value tainment with Joe Rogan uh, Dr. Stephen Greer G-R-E-E-R -E -E -R. he's briefed the head of the CIA he's briefed the head of the CIA his wife um, he's briefed the chief head of a chief intelligence. He's briefed the head of joint of staff chief chief of intelligence, and 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 the UK um, defence ministers in Australia and other places as well. And he says when he talks about this stuff, because they ask him to go and talk about it, there's no laughing in the room. Like there's an ominous feeling in the room. Like why don't we know about this? The military industrial complex is doing this secretly, and people have asked like the. Um, Joint Chiefs of Staff Intelligence uh, head officer said, "Look, he was on the phone to his senior. So look, I'm, I'm the I'm the Joint Chief Joint Chief of Staff head of intelligence. I should know about any operations going on on craft or UFOs. And so they said, sir, that's all you need to know. And he pushed it, and they threatened to they threatened him basically. Um, so Eisenhower was a five star general in the military, um, much loved and respected by a lot of people." The last thing he said on his closing statement of his presidency was, we must be aware of the, of the dangers of the, of the military industrial complex. Uh, JFK, um, John F. Kennedy, just before he was assass assassinated, um, coincidence probably, warned about the secret societies and used the word conspiracy before it was um, loaded to death, that word. Um, and said there's a monolith, you, you know, you see this government, but that's not what's really going on. There's a, there's a, there's a, a, re a real government calling the shots, that's why not much changes when you vote Labour or Tory or Republican or Democrat, etc. Um, and I would also highly recommend watching Dr. Robert Lazar, who in his 20s um, figured out how to put a jet engine into a Honda and attracted the attention, the attention of uh, certain groups who... They, it's, like when people go to work for the CIA or they work on classified information, I've heard this now from multiple places. They do strange things like they'll, they'll say it's something else, you know, an artist wanted for whatever when it's uh, CIA costume design or whatever. Um, I can't remember exactly his what they hooked him with, but obviously they heard about him having this uh, this Honda powered by a jet engine, and for thirty years has maintained the story. And there's a film about it um, on Netflix. Um, again, that's Robert uh, Lazar, L-A-Z-A-R. 
Um, he said he arrived at work just sort of told secret things and it's also regular practice in you know, classified documents to throw in rubbish bits of information to throw off any whistleblowers to make them seem discreditable blah 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 anyway so he turned up he's, and he saw um, a disc a, a flying saucer disc with a US sticker on it and a guard stood by it with a gun and he he thought it was a model like a US built model the UFOs which they do have as well um, and he touched it and the guard sternly, you know, machine gun strapped to him, said, no, eyes down, move along. And he said that was the first thing he got something that was quite strange, but he was young and excited and, you know, the scientific genius didn't describe himself as that, but he just had to work on the technology. And apparently he walked into the lab, this guy, and they've got this generator, a reverse gravitational field generator. And all the different sources you listen to about UFO stuff, they said, this is how they travel so fast, this is how they get here. It's already been invented on Earth by Nikola Tesla, among others. There's footage of this uh, elsewhere and in that serious film. Of basically, you can you can get electricity straight from sunlight. Like things are powered by gravity and have a gravitational field around them. But it was such a threat to the, the sort of petrodollar uh, dark suits <laughs> of oil and coal and um, the rest of it that it was shut down. Obviously, and all the patents were bought up. And as soon as and when it, there are people who've, who've broken through on this technology and worked on it, and they've basically the patents have been stolen, they've been threatened. Like the level of threat and intimidation is unbelievable. Like they will, they will come after you, the national security people. That they're, they're beyond Trump or Obama or the, or the CIA or the FBI. It's like they've got a monopoly on this technology, and according to a lot of people, have had it for decades. Um, some of it could be from archaeological digs. According to Bob Lazar, when he worked at Area 51, which is just one part of the Nevada testing range, Area S2, Area S12, blah, 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 um, 54, he, there was a hangar where they kept the craft. And one day he looked in and there were nine, and they all looked different. Um, and the, he used to read the daily briefing every day that everyone got, and there were talks about archaeological digs finding some of them, and there was talk about autopsies. Um, Dr. Stephen Greer talks about pe people he knew. That, again, like, and the film's so impressive that I forget the narrator's voice, but the, everyone in there is like a very high military official. You know, that's what's... Like, everyone. <laughs> that's what's really... What really hammers it home. Like, very serious people. Like, Commander Freda, is it? He took the Tic Tac incident. Again, Joe Rogan. So it's Joe Rogan, Tic Tac, Commander. Him and f four or five other very senior commander fighter pilots watch for four or five minutes in real time as this thing that they described like a shape like a huge tic tac did incredible maneuvers for you know get, going th thousands of miles in a second the way the way they all these sightings described to move suddenly been able to go very very fast because they broke we've broken the speed of sound the sound barrier and apparently they've broken the light barrier thousands of years ago millions of years ago who knows and a lot of <laughs> the story well UFOs visiting Earth is in is in the Sanskrit text and it's in artwork. Fourteenth century, it's the Sanskrit going way, way, way back, thousands of years. They talk about an an iron weapon that, that was had the power of a thousand suns and it had exploded and craft coming to visit and there's all kind of Japanese the Japanese civilizational foundational stories. The civilization was given to them by these sort of two foot tall Yoda looking um, uh, aliens. Um, <laughs> not saying that, not saying that's true, but. Um, Yes, so there was the reading about autopsies. Stephen Greer said he spoke to someone who remembered seeing a being in a cage because a few of them survived. And again, in the film, before this all got all suppressed in Area Fifty One and conspiracy and ridicule, there's there's the footage of the people who found them saying at press conferences, "We found, we can confirm some cra some craft crashed over Nevada with some beings in them, some living, some not." And apparently we've been having the, we've had this technology for ages and we've been secretly using it um, in the military and to shoot down um, other ETs. Apparently electromagnetic um, lasers are used for that, which doesn't seem like a very good, a very good idea. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to, to plant some seeds there. Um, if you, if you put this smartphone that you're holding in the hands of George Washington, or even Tesla maybe, 
in the 1920s, they would look they would, they would if they would look at you like you were a sorcerer. And again, like just fast forward a hundred years, if someone gave you, well, they wouldn't even say it because we'd be interfacing. Um, <laughs> if someone gave you a hundred years time technology now, what would you think? You know, um, it's really not that baffling when you think. Say there there are trillions of galaxies, and inside them, God knows how many planets, and to say the universe isn't teeming with life is, is just absolutely ridiculous when you when you think about it. And there's too much footage now. And again, 4,000 crash sites, a lot of which, over 2,000 of which left physical debris, okay? Uh, in England, uh, Chile, Japan. The, in the serious film, there's, um, they have the recording of Japanese pilots seeing a monolithic black structure in the sky, flashing lights that they had no idea what it was. Um, and it's, it's just... It's very hard to fake that. Um, there is some more esoteric stuff I could get into, but I just thought I'd put it out there because of the um, Pentagon have released three videos of UFOs. So it's not a case of if UFOs are there or not, because they are. Uh, it's a case of why don't we know about it? Is there a good reason we don't know about it? What technologies have been used already? What civilizations are we talking to already? Have they given us anything to have suddenly sped up our technologies? Have we done anything like blowing up hydrogen bombs to attract attention in recent years? Um, they do appear near testing sites. Uh, Michi Akaku, the physicist, explained how we are a type zero civilization. <laughs> um, you know, fighting using fossil fuels, let alone type one, let alone type two, let alone type three, let alone type four. Um, so maybe they'd, you know, we they're like, oh, the kids are causing trouble. Let's go in there, keep an eye on them. Anyway, who knows? It's all speculation, guys. But the three videos released from the Pentagon today are not. And serious disclosure: the footage of that alien being, um, Bob Lazar, Doctor Stephen Greer, uh, Michio Kaku, the mainstream cyberspace physicist. Check these guys out. I know it's so paradigm shifting and ridiculous, um, but it's <laughs> trust me, it's been created to appear that way. Um, and I just want to take your mind off coronavirus and blow it in a in a more upward positive direction. And one thing Stephen Greer said, he's been studying this stuff for 30 years, but look, the CIA chief requested him when he wanted to know about this. Um, heads of major organisations request him um, to go and do some heads of intelligence organisations request him. And he said he's never once heard of a malevolent encounter with, with an alien. And he claims to have encountered them, he claims to have known a lot of people who have encountered them. Um, and it's never malevolent, apparently, so if you do, <laughs> I haven't, it'd be cool too, but if you do um, meet anything that looks non-human, be peaceful and friendly, because we don't know the half of it, and with any luck, they're above type zero, and they want to be peaceful and friendly too. Alright guys, have a normal day, bye bye.